welcome to the first episode of the Arnold Sports Festival Power Podcast. I am Brent Lalonde. I'm the Communications Director for the Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio. I am joined today, um, as I will for most of our episodes, with Dr. Bill Kramer uh, from the Ohio State University, Professor of, of Kinesiology and one of the world's uh, premier experts in the field of strength and resistance training. Um, also joining us today is Bob Lormer, the president of Classic Productions um, and the man behind the Arnold Sports Festival, not only here in Columbus, Ohio, but around the world as well. We will have five uh, total festivals in 2018, um, but it all kicks off March 1 through 4, 2018 in Columbus, Ohio, as the Arnold Sports Festival celebrates its 30th anniversary. Uh, it was started out as the Arnold Classic in 1989. Um, has grown into the uh, world's largest multi-sport festival, 20,000 athletes, 75 different sports and events. Um, over four days, about 200,000 attendees. Um, been doing it in Columbus, Ohio for 30 years. Um, so 2018 will be a very, very special year uh, for the Arnold Sports Festival, for Bob and his dad, Jim, um, and the whole organization. So, Bob, uh, your thoughts uh, quickly on um, the Arnold Sports Festival reaching its 30th birthday. Um, you've been there since almost, obviously, since day one. Um, how how's the, the event grown, and how have you seen it change over the years? Well, thank you, Brent, for that introduction, and Bill for being here. Yeah, we really you. appreciate you being thank here you for the much. first one, and uh, this is first of many, we hope. But, again, we really should have started this in 1976, yeah. Yeah. and uh, because mm -hmm. that's really when it did start with, with my father, Jim Larmer's and Arnold's handshake. Yeah. And then we started with the Mr. Olympia. As Brent said, to see this thing growing as it has grown uh, in 1976, it was really just bodybuilding at the time. And, um, you know, I was in the audience there selling programs and yelling programs <laughs> and T-shirts. And, and that's really how it started, and it continued to grow. But it was yeah. really, it, Brent, it was really in 89 when, when we took on the Arnold Classic as the name of the event. And uh, it's just exponentially grown every year ever since because we continue to add new events to it on a yearly basis. So it's just there's no end to where this thing will end up either. So Yeah, just to back up for a second, a lot of folks do not realize that um, Jim and Arnold promoted the Mr. Olympia competition in Columbus six times between 1976 and 1986. Mm -hmm. um, that event obviously has settled into Las Vegas uh, in September every year. Um, really the other major uh, prestigious bodybuilding weekend on the calendar. But um, that event was here um, in Columbus six times uh, between 76 and 86. Obviously, all three wins by Frank Zane, I believe, were, were here in Columbus. Frank, um, so, Franco. Uh, Franco. And um, who else won in Columbus? Do you remember? Uh, not all. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to have to research that one, get back to who won in Columbus. Yeah. But, but, looking, but moving forward in 1989 um, – you guys put Arnold's name on the event. Uh, started with the Arnold Classic um, in 1989, and then when the Greater Columbus Convention Center opened up in the 1990s, you guys moved the expo over there and started adding more events, martial arts, gymnastics, cheerleading, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and now it's taken over um, really the whole city. Uh, in uh, 2018, we'll once again be in the Greater Columbus Convention Center and the entire Ohio Expo Center, um, where we've moved a lot of our youth events over the last couple of years. Um, with it being the 30th anniversary, Bob, we got a couple of special things. Um, we're going to do some things with our Sunday showcase. Um, so, um, what do you think of? Um, what are your thoughts on that event and this, the changes on on Sunday morning? Well, it's really good because I, I, we hope you tune into that, and we hope to also be able to broadcast that at some point if we could. Especially, so stay tuned for our podcast on that. But uh, for that, we're going to start off with all the. Uh, people that have won the Arnold Classic over the past 30 years. So we're going to have all the past winners in, kind of do start off with a coffee with them in the morning and uh, just mingle, get some autographs with uh, all the ex-pros, and then we'll go right back into, um, you know, maybe a 30-minute hour session with them on the stage with some questions and answers. Hopefully Bob Chickarell's lead that off for us. And, of course, we hope to have Arnold out and uh, maybe he'll flex his muscles in there with some of these pros and uh, 
see if anyone out can, you know, hit back at him on that. So. Yeah, that would be really fantastic. Obviously, Rich Gaspari won the event for the, the first, first year in 1989, uh, but the, the, the list of previous winners is a real who's who from Sean Ray through Flex Wheeler, who's a four-time champion, Dexter Jackson won the event five times, Branch Warren, Kai Green won it a couple times, Jay Cutler won it a couple times, and all those guys will be in Columbus uh, this hope, March. Hope, um, hope to see them there that morning as well as all weekend. Uh, one big change over the last couple of years is the move to the Ohio Expo Center. Um, with the closing of the Franklin County Veterans Memorial a few years ago, we moved our professional amateur bodybuilding competitions into the exp- into the convention center. That caused a um, domino effect where we moved some events out to the Ohio Expo Center and created the uh, kids uh, expo, the Ohio, uh, Arnold Sports World Kids and Teens Expo, and really built um, a hub of youth activities up at the fairgrounds. Uh, equestrians coming back this year, but obviously Taekwondo is up there, gymnastics, cheerleading, table tennis. Your thoughts on the growth of the youth uh, events at the Expo Center and where that's going to lead us into the next 30 years? Well, Brent, really, that is, that's one of our biggest growth factors right there is because it's really it's a matter of bringing the next generation into what we're doing. And so we're starting with uh, some 30 sports. We have all the major league teams that are in Columbus in with, you know, the Blue Jackets and Columbus Crew. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for people to bring their kids in, families to come in. And uh, the uniqueness of it is, is we're really, you know, showing the 30 different sports. So if you bring your, your kids in from, you know, 4 to 18, they get the opportunity to try it out, try any sport, kick a ball, throw a ball. Um, we even have mental games, chess games, and uh, so there is so many different events. But it's really one of our best things that we have going for us because it is family friendly. It leads into, like I said, to sports for all ages, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity for people to see. It really has, you know, opened up a completely new market for us this way as well. So. One area where we are a sort of a victim of our own success is um, a- after 30 years, a lot of folks still consider us a bodybuilding event. They know they see Arnold's name, they see Arnold Classic, um, and they think our weekend is all about um, bodybuilding, weightlifting, powerlifting. So of the 20,000 athletes who compete on our weekend, uh, 16, 17,000 of those are youth. Um, so Dr. Kramer, I want to pull you in for a second here. As a parent, um, we youth athletes, when is too early to start uh, lifting weights? Well, I think, first of all, resistance training is so important for young athletes. If an athlete is able to compete, they should have to train in order to prepare for competition. This not only improves performance, but it also is very important for protecting the young athlete from injury, meaning stronger tendons, stronger ligaments, stronger muscles to take the rigors of their age-related competition is so very important. So we see young athletes, if you're playing soccer at age seven, eight years old, you should be doing certain exercises that develop your body, not necessarily all big, getting big muscles or anything, but develop the body to prepare it for competition and for the game stress. So I think in a book we wrote on strength training for young athletes, we have age-specific types of programs that can be done. So the big mistake made by many parents is they take adult programs and they want to give it to the younger child. And basically this is a mistake. But as far as worrying about, you know, resistance training or worrying about being exposed to that phenomenon is really uh, old school and really old mythology. So I think in reality, I think parents need to realize that the youth sports that we're doing, the type of preparation needed for all levels of youth sport is very important. And I, I for one, think the the whole Arnold Festival Classic is just unbelievable. Nothing like it on the planet with regard to promoting youth sports of all types. Finding the right sport for you as a young athlete is so very important. So I'm really excited about the fact that exposure to all these different types of sports, as Bob mentioned, being able to try different things out and really find where your athleticism and your athletic endeavors really and your passion lie is really important. But no fear of uh, the fact that you're going to be exposed to resistance training. But no, there's age-related, age-specific, and progression for types of programs to prevent injury and improve performance even for the young athlete. 
Yeah, the uh, Sports World Kids and Teens Expo, when you go into that event on Saturday and Sunday on our weekend, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, Columbus Clippers, Columbus Crew, second and seven foundation, does some uh, some football um, training for us, basketball, lacrosse, uh, fencing, gymnastics, uh table tennis, tennis, a Spartan race, which is kind of an obstacle course type race. Kids can come in and, 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 and experience a lot of different sports, find out what they like. Now, Dr. Kramer, you, you touched on seven, eight-year-olds playing travel soccer. Uh, kids play travel baseball at seven years old now. Um, they're specializing in one sport at seven or eight years old, um, or some kids still play a lot of different sports. From a training standpoint, are there specific uh, programs that are sports specific for a kid who's seven years old, or are there some one-size-fits-all that programs that the parents can have their kids do to get them ready to play to play competitively at such a, such a young age? Well, there's a recent uh, pro- position stand by National Strength and Conditioning Association on the developmental scope of athletes from, from youth all the way to, to adulthood. And I think there's been a lot of, of debate about this. I think the many people feel that you know developing athleticism or the ability to move, and then having the training background that basically starts with core development of major muscle groups and major motor activities, being able to walk, jump, skip, do all the basic motor type of activities, and then being able to learn fundamental core exercises at a young age that can prepare your muscles to be able to be in a in a type of training training room, weight training room, to be able to benefit from the from the, the adaptations that occur with resistance training. So I think it there is always the core program that all athletes start with. And I think the mistake that's made is they get too sport specific too soon. And this is really a problem because, you know, just working on your shoulder musculature because you're going to throw a baseball is not the way to train an athlete who's going to play baseball or another sport. you got to have a core basic program that basically sets up your strength fitness. Then you build on top of that related to some of the specifics as you go along. But I think playing the different sports and gaining athleticism as you do through your youth by many uh, outstanding Olympic and professional athletes today is was they thought the secret to their success. And again, uh, it, people debate about that, especially in the world of tennis, golf, things like that, where you have to start young uh, to gain the skill sets that you need. But you still can have the core development around that with other sports complementing it. Yeah, one of our goals at the Arnold Sports Festival is to expose not only youth but adults as well to as many different sports and activities as possible. Uh, One of Arnold's key initiatives is that he wants people to be active. Do something every day. Uh, pick your sport, find your passion, and and and, and do something every day. And, and, and whether it be weightlifting or running or biking or lacrosse or fencing or whatever that case may be, just be active. Now, Bob, you probably get this question a lot. You've been around the event longer than anybody. Seventy-five different sports and events. There's something for everybody out there. If That's somebody right. says, "I'm coming to the Arnold Sports Festival," what should I do? How do you answer that question? Uh, I say just take spend more than a day because you can yep. take in as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, every crevice, every every door that's in the convention center, you try and open it up and, and see what's going on in there because, again, uh, there, there literally is. So I, th- I think it's a matter of following whatever your personal passions are. For instance, we're very strength-oriented, certainly in the Arnold, because we have a lot of power lifting, Olympic lifting. And, uh, but I think some of those things is, is uh, we put a schedule out. Definitely check out our yeah. website. Brent, you did a great job in advertising some of those events. But you really should try and uh, follow off of our website, follow some of the key events. And anytime you get to see world record lifts of any, of any type, uh, certainly I recommend you trying to see those. Um, but, you know, really, it, it's, there's things going on in each one of the booths. We have a 1,000 booths down there. And in each booth, everybody's trying to outdo each other in the booth. So we got guys down there that are doing bench press competitions and, you know, all, all, all sorts of different competitions just with inside of the booth. So I recommend you, you know, try and some of those out and uh, see what your skill level is and where you fall in place. Yeah, I really think that Daily Expo ticket that we offer is the greatest value in sports. I mean, for 15, 15 bucks in down. advance, 20 about. 20 bucks at the door, it gets you into nearly every event that we offer. Uh, so you can come down to the convention center um, on Friday, Saturday. You can spend a whole day in the in, in the expo. Like you mentioned, right. those oh. thousand booths. We have three stages of entertainment inside the expo center, and that's constant uh, entertainment and, 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 and competitions between the physique sports, strongman, weightlifting, powerlifting, 
indoor hiring games. Um, leave the leave the expo and, and and wander around the convention center, and you'll see jump rope and dance sport and fencing yeah. and um, CrossFit and martial arts and just uh, the the the, 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 on and on the, and on. the list goes on and on and on and you can um you can lose yourself in a day and and and, and once you see everything at the convention center then you go to the Ohio Expo Center for all the U sports um, right. so the, the the amount of entertainment and exploration that you will get for for fifteen or twenty bucks a day at our event is um really unmatched in in the uh, sports and, and, and entertainment field um, beyond that Bob there's some special events on our weekend that are that are special to us Friday. And Saturday night at the at Battelle Grand, uh, the party with the pros. Um, we touched on the Arnold Sunday Showcase with all the champions. Uh, just speak to those uh, to a bit. Obviously, the 30th anniversary of the Arnold Classic on, on Saturday night is going to be a very special uh, time on our weekend. Absolutely. But, you know, Brent, because it's 30, we have uh, so many great athletes. This is really one of our best fields yet. So, mm-hmm. And it keeps getting better and better and better. But this year, everybody's coming out to try and win that 30th title. Mm-hmm. And um, so for that's what Brent alluded to on, on in Patel Hall on Friday and Saturday night. We have, you know, bikini and figure fitness, men's bodybuilding, uh, open 212. Mm-hmm. But it's just the best of the best in there. And uh, that's really another one of those must-see things that you possibly can take that in. So. Yeah, we'll be announcing the fields in the IFBB Pro League events, including the Arnold Classic, the Arnold Classic 212, Fitness Figure, uh, Bikini International events, the Physique events. Um, but we did talk to Cedric McMillan this week. Um, he is committed to come back to defend his title. And um, the speech he gave last year after he won that competition um, on the stage um, and really gave a, a – a uh, tribute to his fellow competitors it was really a special event. He's very popular with our fans and um, will Absolutely. be um, another popular uh, choice for, for, for our event this year. Absolutely. But, you know, he's got, he's got some work ahead of him. Hopefully Dexter's coming back out and Dennis Wolf, And, uh, you know, he's got, a, he's got a real strong field to contend with. So I hope he brings in his best shape. So, Dr. Kramer, I know you've been coming to our event for a long, long time. What do you like to do when you're on the weekend? Well, pretty much, I think, as everybody else, I, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, I started back about 20 years ago. Uh, and I was giving a talk, and uh, I still remember it. It was I didn't think anybody would attend it. It's on the molecular basis of hypertrophy, and the place Sign me was up. <laughs> the place was packed with about 400 people, and I'm going wow. And then I I started to go through, and I had a obviously stayed in a hotel right across the street, so I was really very very local. And it was just amazing. There's so many things to do, and now it's grown to the point where I said whole families as Bob said you get the exposure to so many different things and you know I wish there was something like that uh, decades ago when I when I was a kid because it just shows you the plethora of what's available to physically express yourself and in the physical culture aspect so I think I I just try to grab everything I can I think I love the exhibition uh, the exhibit booths and everything like that just from what I try to see what's going on I mean I've met some uh, amazing people over the years you know Sylvester Stallone to uh, to uh, you know <laughs> the different areas, including uh, Arnold, when they're at the different places places years ago. But just the idea of seeing all the people and all the things going on, and then the competitions, you know, women's gymnastics, and and looking at the young powerlifters, and looking at different and arm wrestling now is being really popular. So I think there's so many things that you kind of are interested in, as your own experience will push you in one way or the other. But again, there's some things you'll see that you never thought people compete in. And I think that's what's really amazing about it. And I think the whole construct of just the array of activities available and the idea of being able to really enjoy seeing this kind of uh, uh, celebration of physical activity and physical culture, that there's no place else like it in the world, at least the center place here in Columbus, relative to this particular event. And I know there's other places around the world it's done, but I got to think this is like the centerpiece. And uh, I just think it's, it's really a great event and great activities. And I've seen it grown even in my short time with it over the last 15, 20 years uh, to see all the excitement around it. And you can see everybody's really uh, looking forward to some of the major events coming up this particular time. And you've been doing research for the last 30 years at places like the University of Connecticut, Penn State, Ball State, up in Wisconsin and Minnesota. You came to Columbus about four years ago. Right. Um, having the Arnold Classic in your backyard had must be a, 
made that decision to move here a little bit easier. <laughs> well, it definitely is a perk. <laughs> and I think the construct is is uh, Ohio State, the Ohio State University is a great place for all of us uh, who work there to be involved with. Yeah. And I think with regard to the things, we've even now done some work and some work with the Arnold Classic, with the Strongman and different, we're trying to expand that. And we hope we can do more. But I think even besides that, I think it's just a, uh, a great uh, place and a great city that people can get involved with many different activities and this is really a centerpiece and if you can make the journey the sojourn to Columbus on those days uh, you won't be disappointed so Columbus Ohio is where it all started the Arnold Sports Festival's 30th anniversary in March 1 through 4 uh, 2018 arnoldsportsfestival.com is the website for all your information um, but Bob uh, the Columbus event really just kicks off our season that's great. Um, in 2018, we will have a total of five Arnold Sports Festivals worldwide, um, and we go to Australia two weeks later. Correct. Um, and then we have events in South America, Africa, and in Europe. Um, how has that expansion um, affected the uh, the brand and the popularity popularity of the Columbus event now that we are on a total of five continents? Well, Brandon, what it does is really create synergy between the world and us because now we have 80 countries that are participating just in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. But I think if you take uh, what goes on, it's allowed us the opportunity to expose this brand. But the uniqueness is, is what we've done here is very replicable in, in South Africa and Australia and Brazil uh, because, again, we got a really good model started here. The interesting thing is, is where, where it differs a little bit is, like, for instance, in Brazil, they're on the beach, and so they can have beach games yep. and, and different things like that. Each continent has a little bit of uniqueness mm -hmm. to the type of events they can have. But in just a very short period of time, it took us 30 years to get here. We are now the largest multi-sport festival anywhere we know of, and certainly the largest sport festival. But uh, again, in the very short period of time, and it started in 2011, and, and uh, Madrid, Spain, we're in Barcelona now, and that event's just a absolutely out the doors. We had to move it out of Madrid because we outgrew the facility. And uh, so we did the same thing. We're, we've kind of really t outgrew the facilities in Rio. We moved over to Sao Paulo, and now we're potentially talking about doing two in Brazil just to, you know, because <laughs> the, the population's so large. But uh, it's just been a phenomenal thing, and if you get the opportunity to go around to one of the other ones, to see it, you'll see a lot of the sameness, but there's a lot of unique and a lot of differences, and uh, it's, it's something really, you know, good to go see yourself the other five locations. So. Yeah, I know our partners around the world have all really grasped that sports festival concept, right. adding as many different uh, youth and adult sports to the weekend. And in Columbus here with 75 different sports and events, we have obviously add two or three things new every year. Um, and as, once you get to 75 and above, it becomes a little more obscure to find new things to add. Um, but in 2018, we've, we've done it again. Uh, we're going to have a, a competitive axe throwing competition. So that's one for you, Dr. Kramer, to uh, uh, add to your list of, of, of sports to research. Um, we're going to have a body painting competition. Equestrian is going to make its return. Pickleball will make its return. Uh, we're going to delve into electronic um, e-sports uh, really for the first time. And then in the uh, physique uh, sports and professional and amateur bodybuilding, we are going to add classic physique both at the Arnold Amateur and in the IFBB Pro League. So, Bob, you've seen and, and, and watched this over the last few years, the addition of bikini, the addition of men's physique, the addition of all these new divisions that have really opened up the sport of fitness and the sport of competitive bodybuilding to a much wider audience. Um, that's been a real advantage to us as promoters, um, but also to see more more people embrace the health and healthy and fitness, fitness lifestyle. Um, what do you think classic physique fits into all that? Well, I think I think it is one of the greatest merging uh, things that we have on our weekend, and the reason being is because you know there's in the bodybuilding. If you get to the top ten in bodybuilding, they're at the pinnacle and they're very hard to catch. But what happens is is in physique and and a lot of these divisions, men's physique, the men's yep. physique, women's physique. Um, you know, classic physique that they're more mainstream. There's something that you can you can use yourself shoot for because in almost every gym across America, um, any rec centers, YMCA's, yeah. they're all out there promoting this type thing. And it's just a matter of people that have the genetics to get it started, 
and to get in there, but it, it, it certainly reaches a much more broad mainstream population where you yourself have the opportunity to try and get in that shape and uh, compete. So I think uh, you know, the, you'll see these numbers continue to grow. They're some of the best growths that the, the sport of bodybuilding has seen in 20 years. So we look forward to that, that in the future. Well, we're very excited to see who will become the first Arnold Classic Physique Champion on yeah. Friday night at the Arnold Sports Festival in 2018. Um, wrapping up here, Dr. Kramer, Bob, uh, we're very excited, as, as, as we've said, 30th anniversary. We've been doing this in Columbus Fire since 1989. Um, 75 different sports and events, 20,000 athletes, 200,000 attendees over four days. It will be here before you know it. Um, so wrapping up, Bob, um, just your thoughts um, personally from, from something your father started in 1976, really back in the late 60s, promoting sport here in Columbus. Just to think, 30 years, where is that? When, when you stop and think about that, um, hmm. what, what, what comes to your head? Well, it just wow. I mean, there's only one word that could ever describe what this event is. But my, my closing arguments on this thing, Bill, or uh, Brent and, and Bill, if you have not been to the Arnold Sports Festival be before, you really need to take the opportunity to come in and experience it yourself. If nothing else, for people people watching in itself, I mean, you can yeah. just you'll see spectacles that you've never seen before. People of every size and color, race, everything that's in here. But it's an amazing thing to see. Come uh, come experience the whole thing. Like Brent said, it's just fifteen dollars at the door or twenty dollars at the door. But uh, it's something that if you know, it, it, it's wow. Wow. <laughs> so please visit our website, arnoldsportsfestival.com. Uh, you will find ticket information and schedules. Uh, if you want to compete, there's ways to compete. We have a 5K run that's open to everybody. We have a variety of other competitions, that, uh, something for everybody. If you want to sign up and compete on our weekend, we would love to have you. Again, March 1 through 4, 2018 in Columbus, Ohio, the 30th anniversary of the Arnold Sports Festival. On behalf of Dr. Kramer, uh, President Bob Lorimer, thank you again for joining us today on the latest edition of the Arnold Sports Sports Festival Power Podcast. Um, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Arnold Sports Festival. Uh, sign up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Instagram at Arnold Sports, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.